Introduction Learning to play the piano is quite an adventure. It is a beautiful thing to feel your fingers fly across the keys of the piano. It is a transcending experience to be carried away to another world by the notes you play. It truly feels otherworldly to create such lovely sounds and songs by just using parts of your body. But you will never experience that feeling if you allow fear to stop you from taking those first steps to learning to play such a great instrument. Learning to play the piano can be a daunting task if you do not know where to start. I know. That is the reason I wrote this book. This book was created to remove the worry and uncertainty and arm you with knowledge and know-how to make this a musical journey that is joyful rather than stressful. Becoming a master pianist starts with your mindset. The piano has 88 black and white keys. That can seem like a huge number of parts to remember, the tone and pitch for each, their location, and how to position your fingers on each. I am not going to sugarcoat it and tell you that you will learn to play the piano playing overnight. That is not going to happen. It did not happen for the brilliant Norwegian pianist Leif of Ansnes, for the Chilean master musician Claudio Aru, or Russian master of classical music Vladimir Ashkenazi. It was not an overnight process for Ludwig von Beethoven or Frederick Chopin either. However, each of these famous and brilliant piano players started not knowing a thing about pianos to become master pianists of their time. The thing is, there was nothing special about them compared to any other person who wanted to play an instrument except their mindset. These people were patient, consistent, and did not give up because they forgot a key or musical note. They did not throw their hands up and walk away from the piano because they did not understand a chord or a scale. They certainly did not give up based on a bad performance or an off day. They kept at it and improved over time. Anyone can do this as long as they do not stop trying. They believed that they would become a master piano player, and they manifested those thoughts with study and action. The first thing you need to do is approach this piano playing adventure with a growth mindset. A growth mindset is one that is based on an underlying belief that anyone can achieve anything through learning and experience. People with this belief think that their success at any facet of their life is dependent on their effort rather than their current smarts or talent. On the other hand, there are people with a fixed mindset. These people believe that people's qualities and talents are fixed and can never be changed. They believe that talent alone leads to success and that effort is not required. A person of a fixed mindset believes that you are either born a master piano player or you will never be one. That is a very limiting way of thinking. The fact is we all change every day based on things we see, hear, smell, taste, feel, intuit, and experience. We are changed by the disappointments and successes we face. We adapt when our environments change. Our ancestors and the people of today evolve in this way because our minds are not static things. They are dynamic and continually build new neural connections and adjust every day due to everything that we encounter in our world. This gives us a great capacity for learning that no other animal on this planet has. Anyone who has achieved anything great with consistent results has had the following properties. A great work ethic, attention to detail, diligence, commitment, an eagerness to learn, the willingness to practice, dedication, these are traits that can be developed within anyone as long as that person is dedicated to personal growth and development. This person has to have a growth mindset. Your success with piano playing is up to you. Your pace of learning may be slower or faster than other people. You may have difficulty where others learned with ease, and you may be naturally inclined where other beginner players struggle. Your piano playing journey is a unique one. You should not compare it to any other. The only comparison you need to make is your progression today compared to yesterday's progress. Your progression today has been picking up this book and being curious about piano playing. The next step involves building on that curiosity with sound knowledge and then practice. This book will help with both. To kickstart your education about piano playing, let's start with the history of how the piano came into existence. 
The History of the Piano The piano was invented in 1709 by an Italian called Bartolomeo Cristofori, 1655-1731. Cristofori invented the instrument because he was unsatisfied because of the lack of controls that the musician had over the volume of the harpsichord in that time period. Due to its close relation to the harpsichord, the piano was actually first called clavicimbalo col piano e forte, which when translated means a harpsichord that can play soft and loud noises. One of these original pianos still exists at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City. The piano was divided into three categories based on the sound it produces. It was categorized as a string instrument, a wind instrument, and a percussion instrument. This categorization was based on the roots of the development of the piano, which has characterizations of the harpsichord, clavichord, and dulcimer. From the first invention of the piano, it has gone through quite the metamorphosis and continually evolved since then. Domenico del Miglia built on Cristofori's design by creating the earliest known upright piano in 1739. The piano got another upgrade soon after with the addition of pedals. The pedals lifted the dampers from the strings of the early piano to create a sustained sound. This was a contribution done by the piano builder called Gottfried Silbermann. In the late 1700s, the piano building became a massive endeavor in Viennese schools. Mozart composed of the piano, which was then an instrument with a wooden frame with a note comprising of two strings. The piano got another update in the early 1800s with the addition of a range of more than five octaves. Broadwood, an English firm, was the first to achieve this with sturdier-made pianos. Around the same time, the theatrical pianist and composer, called Franz Liszt, were born in Hungary. He was a player known for his flair and the creation of the piano recital. In 1863, the piano player, which played itself using a piano roll and mechanics, was invented by the Frenchman called Henri Fournau. The grand piano and modern upright piano were also invented in the late 1800s. By 1919, more than 150,000 pianos and almost 200,000 player pianos were being manufactured in the United States alone. At the height of the Cold War, Van Cliburn won the first international Tchaikovsky competition in Russia in 1958. This led to the first Van Cliburn International Piano Competition in 1962. This was held in Fort Worth, Texas. Digital pianos made an appearance in the 1980s. This led to the production of keyboards and onboard recording technology for pianos. By the late 2000s, pianos had become extremely high-tech with onboard learning tools, MIDI technology installed, internet capability, and computer screens, to name a few of the additions. To show the popularity of these, over 140,000 digital pianos were sold in the United States alone in 2005. The first pianos ever created were so expensive that even the wealthy had problems affording it. For nearly a century after the first piano was invented, only royalty and aristocrats owned pianos. Times have certainly changed and allowed almost anyone to have access to a piano so that they could learn the great skill of playing the instrument. Benefits of learning to play the piano. Playing the piano has mental, emotional, and physical benefits. They include relieving stress. Music takes the soul on an emotional journey every time a player takes up the art. This is a soothing feeling that cannot be described, but a definite stress reliever. Playing the piano aids in improving mood. Not only is the feeling emotional, but the physical evidence of stress relief is also clear. It also helps lower blood pressure. The stress relieving benefits of playing the piano are so strong that it has been shown to help relieve stage fright. It improves brain function. When you learn to play any instrument or develop any new skill for that matter, New neural pathways are created in your brain. This enhances the performance of the brain, enhances concentration and focus. Playing the piano requires that you use both your hands to perform different tasks at the same time while remembering and performing musical notes. The player is also required to control his or her breath, operate pedals, and perhaps read and interpret sheets of music. Piano playing also requires hand-eye coordination. This is not something that is easy to achieve, but the more the performer practices and persists, the better his or her skills of concentration and focus become. 
These are skills that move across the board and help in other areas in your life, including career, education, and family life, because they make the player a better multitasker. Enhances muscle strength. Playing the piano requires that you position your hands and fingers in certain ways. This strengthens the muscles of your hands and arms, two areas that are not typically trained by the average person. However, it is vitally important that you keep your hands and fingers strengthened to increase your range of motion and to give you pain relief, especially as you age. Improves posture. You need to sit up straight with your back in a straight line to effectively play the piano. A slouched back is not allowed. Therefore, playing the piano promotes better posture, which helps keep the bones and joints of your back in proper alignment. Aids in decreasing the abnormal wearing of your joints, prevents the spine from becoming fixed in positions that are not normal, and decreases the stress on your ligaments, just to name a few. It improves hearing and memory. Playing the piano requires that you remember musical theory and notes as well as how to position your body and hands to make musical magic. This requires enhanced memory skills, which you develop the more you practice. Since playing the piano aids in improving brain processing and function, it also improves memory function. Also, the ability helps improve inner ear hearing, something that is often lost as we age. Playing the piano makes the player subconsciously learn to listen to the notes that are being played more closely, so that the auditory complex of the brain is adjusted accordingly. People who play the piano learn to develop a sense of relative pitch and to recognize intervals, tool, and chords, all of which help develop oral awareness. Improves language skills. It has been scientifically proven that children who practice piano playing in their early years are 20% more advanced in the vocabulary than their peers. Another study in the 1990s in educational psychology summarized that language development and spatial, temporal intelligence could be boosted by piano lessons for preschoolers. This was called the Mozart effect. Improves response to criticism and disappointment. If a piano player ever plans to work with a teacher or perform in front of an audience, this person needs to learn to take feedback and advice on their skill and ability, as well as learn from that advice and feedback. This ability typically transfers to other aspects of the player's life, such as professional and personal. The player may also choose to perform in piano competitions or at concerts. This is something that is filled with disappointment, as well as successes. The player needs to learn to maintain a positive outlook, whether this feedback is good or bad just as you need to learn to celebrate your wins and progressions with piano playing, you need to learn to handle when things are not so bright. Aids in developing social participation. By learning to play the piano, it is safe to assume that a person plans to perform in front of a group at some point. This is a great ambition, as it is great to share your talents with other people. Playing the piano socially also helps you to expand your network as you build your status in the musical community. Also, discussing piano playing with other musicians is a great way to expand your knowledge and understanding in addition to building your social skills. Improves academic performance. Because piano playing improves concentration and focus, it is good at helping a person improve their overall academic performance. Scientific studies show that children who begin playing the piano at a young age have better grade school averages than children who do not. This is attributed to improved cognitive development and mathematical skills. A study in the Educational Psychology Journal in 1993 also summarized that persons who played the piano were more likely to develop better reading skills due to improved memory skills and the ability to discriminate between pitches. Improves mathematical skills. A study was conducted by Martin F. Gardiner and his colleagues at the Center for the Study of Human Development at Brown University. This study found that musical training boosted mathematical skills such as counting in second graders. It helps improve time management and organization skills. Learning to play the piano needs to become part of your daily routine if you want to be good at it. It, therefore, requires that you organize your schedule to fit this into your life while also performing the other tasks and responsibilities that you need to throughout your days. This is an especially great function to develop in children 
so that it becomes a lifelong skill. Encourages creativity. Playing the piano and many other instruments encourages the performer to create a unique and original style and a sound because it activates the part of the brain responsible for creativity, while lowering the activity of the part of the brain responsible for default responses. It improves self-esteem and confidence. A 2014 study in Canada focused on fourth grade students in public schools and found that children who received piano lessons for three years had boosted self-esteem due to their musical achievements. Playing the piano and mastering its nuances is an incredible way to boost your confidence. These are only a few ways that playing the piano develops not only musical skills, but the person as a whole. With so many benefits and the stigmas attached, it can seem like playing the piano is a huge task that only a few can successfully accomplish. This is far from the truth. Anyone can learn to play the piano. Learning to play the piano does not have to be difficult. It can be an easy and enjoyable task. Some approaches to the task can make it seem never-ending, with too much to learn. The theory of it can seem a bore even though it is vital to understanding chords, melodies, scales, and songs. It does not have to be this way. This book shows that learning to play the piano is worth your time, energy, and effort, because you will come away with not only a new skill, but a newfound way of looking at the wider world. In fact, here is a thorough breakdown to what will be discussed in the chapters to come. What you will learn in this book. Hand exercises to make piano playing a comfortable experience. The proper posture for sitting at the piano. Pre-preparation tips that will make starting to play the piano as easy as possible. Common mistakes that beginner piano players make and how to avoid them. Piano terminology you should know. The layout of the piano. How to play major and minor scales and chords. Examples of chord progressions and songs. So much more. You determine your piano playing experience. By the time you reach the end of this book, you will gain crucial insight and practical advice and strategies that will help ease you into the world of piano playing. You will learn what to do, what not to do, and tips that will make this journey easier and not overbearing. I find it admirable that you are undertaking such a beautiful musical journey, especially since you have taken this first step in solidifying the skill. This leads me to my next point. Reading this book is worthless without action. I have done my part and gathered all this information into this compact, no fluff and straight to the point book. The responsibility is now on you to not only read and absorb the knowledge imparted within these pages, but to then put this knowledge into action. That is the only way you will see progress in your piano playing skills and abilities. As mentioned earlier, a growth mindset is needed to ensure your piano playing experience is a rewarding one. Keep your mind and heart open. Do not let difficulties dissuade you and celebrate when you have success. Most importantly, have fun. Turn the page to change your life with a globally universal skill completely. Chapter 1. Getting Started Piano playing often seems like a momentous task because many people try to approach it without breaking the process down into small, manageable steps. This chapter is dedicated to showing you how to get the art of piano playing down right from the beginning. With good posture and finger exercises, practice far too many skips in a rush to playing. How to sit at a piano. Piano playing requires that the player sits oftentimes for hours on ends while he or she plays. Sitting the correct way helps the player maintain flexibility in reaching all the keys, as well as cultivating the proper technique for hitting the piano keys. This has several aspects that the player needs to consider, such as the height and quality of stool and placement of different body parts. Let us start with piano stools and their importance in your piano playing experience. Piano Stools Piano players come in different heights and sizes, and as such, one stool height will not be suitable for all. Therefore, the height and placement of the piano stool need to be a consideration before you start playing. A pianist needs to sit with his or her elbows at the same height as the keyboard in a ready-to-play-the-position. 
The height of the keyboard typically varies from 70 to 73 centimeters, but the standard height is 75 centimeters. There are persons who will not feel comfortable trying to achieve an elbow height of this range. Luckily, there are two types of piano stools. One is non-adjustable and the other is adjustable. The adjusted types have been around since the 1970s and are the best bet if the range stated above does not work for you or your body type. It is good to note that you can add a cushion to a stool to give additional sitting height in a pinch. Other qualities the piano stools possess include being single or duet. As the name suggests, the single stool is best for one player, while the duet stool is made to sit two players at the same time. Two single sits can work just as well to house two players at the same time. Another consideration is the make of the stool. There are two make types which include the flat packed variety and stools with fixed jointed legs. The first variety comes packaged to be assembled and so the legs need to be screwed on after being received. On the other hand, the second variety comes packaged as a single unit. Most piano stools made before the 1960s contained fixed jointed legs. These types of stools are typically closer to players' hearts. This may be because they are typically sturdier and last longer. They are also typically more expensive. If you do not have a stool, using a chair is acceptable. A stationary chair is best. If the chair is too low, a quick fix is adding a hard cushion. The correct sitting posture for playing the piano. Height. When you sit on the stool, your elbows and arms should be able to fall freely from your shoulders. Your forearm needs to be parallel to the floor. Your arm placement needs to be at an angle slightly more than 90 degrees. Use an adjustable stool or cushions to get the right height. Distance. The placement of your body is also important. You need to move your stool or chair forward enough so that your torso still moves easily, but your legs are under the keyboard. Your back needs to feel stable. You need to be able to bring your elbows slightly in front of your torso comfortably. Hand arc. The hands form an arc when the piano is being played. This means that the fingers need to be pointed downward so that they do not strike the keys flatly. You play the piano at your fingertips only. Your wrists need to be aligned with the rest of your arms. Adjusting your sit correctly will help you achieve this arc. A common mistake that beginner piano players do is flatten their wrists. Hand placement. A neat trick here is to imagine that you are holding an egg in your palm as you position your hands over the keyboard. Imagine maintaining this hand posture as you play to ensure your hands remain correctly aligned. Keep the energy flowing through your whole arm and keep the bridge of your arm around. Posture. Posture is defined at the position in which we maintain our bodies while standing, sitting, or lying down. Good posture is important for daily living to keep the bones and joints properly aligned to allow muscles to work efficiently and to prevent muscle strain, back pain, and overuse disorders. Posture is equally important when playing the piano. When sitting at the piano, the player needs to face the instrument squarely and the stool needs to be centered. The player needs to sit toward the front half of the stool with feet flat on the floor from toe to heel. Kids or shorter people can use a foot rest to keep the feet balanced on a flat surface. Your weight needs to be centered on your bum so that you do not place weight on your feet. Not sitting too far back keeps the player flexible yet stable, which makes the process of playing more comfortable and thus easier. Ensure that your shoulders and arms remain relaxed and your back remains straight. This will allow you to move all your body parts up to your fingers smoothly. Ensure that your neck is long so that your head remains straight. Another common mistake among piano players is stretching their necks forward. This causes pain. If you find that you continuously stretch your neck, this may be a sign of eye trouble. Consult a licensed doctor about this or wear your glasses if you have been prescribed them. Posture exercises for sitting at the piano. You should practice sitting at the piano even when you are not sitting at the piano. There are everyday exercises you can incorporate into your normal routine so that correct posture becomes second nature to you. There are also exercises you can perform while sitting at the piano. These will be discussed in this section as well. Before we get to these, however, let's take a moment to discuss body awareness. 
Maintaining good posture, whether or not you play the piano, is about being self-aware. You need to become familiar with what feels good and what does not. Bad posture has signs and symptoms that you can look out for. They include rounded shoulders, a pot belly, knees that bend when you stand or walk, muscle fatigue, back pain, a head that leans to the front or back, and headaches. Once you learn to recognize what bad posture feels like, then you can take corrective steps to fix this condition. The first step in this is creating body awareness in yourself. Body awareness is a type of mindfulness that encourages better self-care and the minimization of injury risk. There are several practices that you can engage in to develop this awareness, and they include practicing breathwork techniques, becoming familiar with diagrams of the human skeleton so that you are better able to imagine the bones underneath your skin and how your actions affect their stability and structure, focusing on your balance and engaging in practices that strengthen it, learning to sense symmetry in your body so that you notice the muscle movement and sensation on either side of your body. Treat developing body awareness as a meditation exercise. Think of the small details about your body. Continuously question yourself about the different things that you feel and the sensations flowing through your body. You can take just five minutes every day to do this. Consistency will allow you to notice the nuances in your movement and posture that suggest bad posture so that you can correct this. You will be amazed at the progress you will make with this daily five-minute exercise. After a while, this will become automatic, and you will do it without needing to be conscious of the action. Where bad posture would have been your default state, good posture will replace this. Sitting exercises for good posture. To promote good posture while sitting, here are a few simple exercises you can perform during your daily life. Keep your shoulders relaxed as you sit. Keep your forearms parallel to the floor. Use an adjustable backrest to support your lower and mid back when you sit in a chair. Always ensure that your feet meet the floor from toe to heel when you sit. If your feet do not reach the floor, use a footrest. Keep a small gap between the back of your knees and the front of your seat as you sit. Ensure that your knees are at or below the level of your hips. Keep your ankles in front of you, do not cross them. Do not sit in the same position for long time periods. As you can see, these practices are much in keeping with what you should practice when you sit at the piano. Standing exercises for good posture. Here are a few of the practices you should perform to promote good posture while you stand. Stand straight. Keep your shoulders pulled back and letting your arms hang naturally from your sides helps with this. Primarily, Bear your weight on the balls of your feet. Keep your knees bent slightly. Keep your feet spaced shoulder width apart. Keep your stomach tucked in. Do not push your head back, forward or to either side. Keep your head level by keeping your ears in line with your shoulders. Move your weight from one foot to the other or from toe to heel if you stand for a long period of time. Lying exercises for good posture. Even when you lie down or sleep, you need to be aware of your posture. Practices that help you maintain proper posture even then include not lying on your stomach, sleep on your side or back. If lying on your side, place a pillow between your legs. If lying on your back, keep a pillow under your knees. This will help prevent back pain. Use a pillow for your back, head and neck while you sleep. Sleep on a mattress that is right for you. Some people find it more comfortable to sleep on a mattress that is harder or softer, while others are more comfortable with something in between. Be mindful of what works for you when you purchase your mattress. Posture exercises while sitting at the piano. You do not have to be a master piano player to practice your posture at the piano. Using all the tips about sitting at the piano, place your right hand on the C position, which is positioned in the middle of the keyboard. Press the C key. Lift your fingers, then press the D key with your second finger. Move your fingers up to the G key, then back down to C. As you perform this task, be mindful of your body. Do you keep your back straight? Are your feet positioned stably on the floor? Are your hands arced? Do you feel pressure anywhere on your body? As you question yourself, correct any mistakes in your posture immediately. As you do this, as well as incorporate good posture in your daily life, with the practices stated above, 
This will come easier and easier for you. Hand Exercises for Piano Playing Your hands and fingers are the strongest assets for playing the piano and, as such, need to be treasured as the priceless items that they are. The hand has 35 muscles, and that does not account for those that connect it to the forearm. It is an unfortunate fact that piano playing can result in pain in the hands, fingers, wrists, and forearms. The pain is not a result of playing the piano itself, but from poor techniques and failing to stretch the hands and fingers before beginning to play. Therefore, it is of extreme importance that you make the commitment to care for your hands and fingers as a dedicated piano player. This will not only make you a better piano player, but also prevent you from becoming injured and save you from footing the cost of medical expenses. This section is dedicated to providing you with exercises that will not only help prevent pain in the hands, fingers, and forearms, but also help increase strength, dexterity, coordination, and flexibility in your hands and fingers. Exercises for your fingers. Piano sessions can be lengthy and thus cramping and pain are common experiences. This can be avoided or at least minimized with finger exercises and stretches prior to playing. These exercises are also designed to increase dexterity. Warm up exercise one. This needs to be performed before you start playing the piano. The warm up exercise not only prep your fingers for playing but also improve flexibility and range of motion and prevent stiffness. All you have to do is close your fingers and squeeze tightly. Hold this pose for three seconds, then release. Repeat this action 10 times. Next, bend each finger individually. Once you have done this for all 10 fingers, rub your hands together. That is it. Just a few minutes can help prevent injury and increase your piano playing performance. Warm up exercise two. Lifting the fingers can be challenging for beginner piano players. The ring finger is of particular challenge to most. Nonetheless, lifting the finger adequately is a needed skill. The higher you lift your fingers before hitting a key, the richer the sound that is produced. Here is an exercise that has a dual purpose. It is a great warm-up and serves to help with higher finger lifting. To perform this exercise, play your hands on the piano keys and consciously lift each finger, one at a time. Do this quickly, then work on playing your finger back on the key in a controlled way. Do this five times before moving on to the next finger. Finger Independence Exercise This is an especially important exercise for beginner piano players because it builds the needed skill of moving the fingers independently. It is also useful in developing increased flexibility, strength, and range of motion in the fingers. To start this exercise, place your hands on the piano keys. Put your right thumb on middle C. Next, hold any three notes with your left hand Well, you use your right hand to play different scales. Scales are sets of musical notes that are ordered by their frequency or pitch. An ascending scale is one that is ordered by increasing pitch, while a descending scale is one that is ordered by decreasing pitch. You will switch hands after playing five sets of scales. Repeat the exercise twice. Finger Gripping Exercise This exercise can be done using an adjustable gripping device or a foamed finger. You simply grip and squeeze the device in smooth, even movements. However, if such a device is not available, you can hold your fingers out and imitate making bear claws while contracting your finger muscles slowly. Strength Training for Fingers Number 1 As the title of this exercise suggests, this is designed to strengthen your fingers. The exercise is done on a flat surface rather than on piano keys. Put your hands on the surface, palm down, and spread your fingers apart. Pushed down lightly but steadily in 10 pulses. Next, bend your knuckles slightly while still keeping your wrists relaxed. You will feel the muscles in your fingers relax and contract as you perform this exercise. Strength training for fingers number two. This exercise is performed by making a fist and wrapping your thumbs around your fingers. Squeeze this fist gentle to feel the contraction of the muscles in your fingers. Hold this position for five seconds as you breathe in and out deeply. Release the first and stretch your fingers. Repeat the exercise five times. Exercises for hands, wrists, forearms, and elbows. Wrist rotation exercises. To perform this exercise, sit in a chair with arms that are comfortable 
supporting your forearms. With your forearms resting there, allow your wrists to be supported and let your fingers hang free. Bend your wrist back and point your hands towards you. Hold this pose for 5 seconds. Allow your hands to fall back so that your fingers hang. Repeat this 10 times. Next, allow your elbows to rest of the chair rests and rotate your forearms until your palms face upward. Hold this pose for 5 seconds. Rotate your forearms back to its original position. Repeat this 10 times. Writing Bending Exercises Extend both hands in front of you and put your palms together with the left hand in the bottom. Pull your fingers back and hold this pose for 5 seconds. Allow your fingertips to touch, then flip the position of your hand and repeat the exercise. Repeat the entire exercise 5 times. Forearms Rotation Exercises Begin by holding your arms in front of you with palms put and fingers pointed out. Slowly rotate your forearms so that your palms face up. Hold this pose for 5 seconds. Form a fist and slowly rotate your wrist inward then outward. Return your hand to their downward position and open your fingers. Repeat the exercise 5 times. Elbow Stretches Stretch your arms out in front of you. Do not lock your elbows. Slowly bend your arms at the elbow and allow your fingers to touch your shoulders. Hold this pose for 5 seconds. Then bring your hand back in front of you. Repeat this exercise 5 times. For increased strength, hold light weights in each hand. Additional Exercises Proper breathing is essential to achieving maximum results with any type of workout or exercise. People discount the importance of breathing even though it is as essential to human existence as food and sleep. Even though breathing is an automatic function of the body, there is a right way to do and not the right way. Breathing is not just about inhaling oxygen, the compound needed to enable proper body function and to expel carbon dioxide, which is a waste product. Breathing with awareness and intent includes many benefits including Natural pain relief Allowing the processing of emotional pain and trauma Increasing joy and happiness Increasing self-image and confidence Improving posture Reducing anxiety and stress Detoxifying the body Improving blood circulation Increasing energy levels Enhancing creativity Breathing the right way can allow you to master difficult situations such as when you have a bad day at piano playing so that these situations do not weigh you down. Typically, people breathe through their chest. This does not promote the complete circulation of air through the lungs. And thus, the body is shortchanged on the amount of oxygen it receives. The proper way to breathe to gain the most benefit is through the diaphragm. The diaphragm is a skeletal muscle that separates the base of the chest from the abdomen. It flattens and contracts when you inhale to create a vacuum that pulls air into the lungs. When you exhale, the vacuum action is eliminated and the diaphragm relaxed to let air escape. You will feel your stomach rise more than your chest when you breathe through your diaphragm. As you practice the exercises outlined above and below, be conscious of your breathing so that you reap the most benefit. Another consideration that beginners and experienced piano players need to make is strengthening and increasing the flexibility of the neck and shoulders. A few quick exercises you can do in that regard include raising both your arms above your head and remaining in that position for 3 seconds before letting your arms relax at your side. Repeat this 5 times. Place your arms along your sides and gently shrug your shoulders. Repeat this 10 times. Cross your left arm over your chest and grip your right shoulder. Gently pull your left arm toward your body with your right hand for 5 seconds. Release and repeat on the other side. Another healthy consideration is ensuring that you get proper nutrition and exercise. Also, it is important not to overdo it. These exercises are meant to help you, not hinder you. Overdoing can lead to injury. Start slow and slowly increase your pace to build your strength, flexibility, and dexterity. Be sure to practice regularly in order to get the best results. The practice of playing the piano with curved fingers. Take a look at your fingers. You will notice that they are all different lengths and thicknesses. Unlike your fingers, all the keys on a piano are the same size. To compensate for this difference, piano players should curve their fingers to play the piano. 
The Benefits of Playing with Curved Fingers Many piano players are unaware that playing with curved fingers is the best technique. Others, such as the famous pianist Vladimir Horowitz, played with flat fingers. His style was unique, though. Many a beginner piano player found difficulty adopting the technique because curving the fingers is not a natural tendency of human beings. Just like good body posture, good piano posture is something that most piano players need to be aware of and to develop consciously. Also, flat fingers create a different tone to curved fingers. It is usually fuller and more blurred. This is because flat fingers create tension in the arm because more effort is needed to keep the fingers straight. Curved fingers create a cleaner, crisper sound, such as the music that was created by Bach or Mozart. It is also easier to push your fingers into the keys with curved fingers. Also, with curved fingers, you can move your fingers up and down the keyboard faster. This allows for a quicker learning of scales. Curving the fingers also allows better flexibility so that your hands can rotate in the direction that you are playing. How to practice curved fingers. This is not complicated and involves simple techniques that build the muscle memory of having the fingers curved. This technique involves holding a water bottle. After your hand has taken the shape of the bottle, remove it from your grip but retain the shape that your hand assumed while holding the bottle. Apply this shape to playing the piano. Learning to play the piano with curved fingers is something that takes time and dedication to learn. Do not worry as if you do not get it right away. Just keep on practicing. Pre-Preparation Tips for Learning to Play the Piano The tips below are provided to help you maximize your piano playing time. They are Create a schedule so that you fit the piano playing into your weekly agenda. This does not have to be a long time. Just ensure that you create the habit of making piano playing a priority. Ensure that you are comfortable before you start playing the piano. This includes making adjustments such as your sitting, for the right height and making accommodations for room to move comfortably. Also ensure there is appropriate lighting. If you are playing a digital piano, adjust the volume levels before you start playing. Eliminate distractions. You want to be completely focused on the task of playing the piano when you do. Therefore, ensure that your senses are completely zoomed in on the task but removing distractions such as smartphones and human company. Figure out a way to record your playing. This will help you notice your playing style and the areas you need to improve. Listen to recordings of other pianists. This will aid in helping learners to recognize the differences in tones and pitches so that you correlate this to your own style. Particularly, listen to accomplished pianists so that your subconscious picks up nuances that can be helpful in your playing. Start slow. This is a huge endeavor that you are taking on. Taking on too much too fast can easily overwhelm you and discourage you from continuing the pursuit. Therefore, when you are playing, break the music up into small parts and take your time as you learn. Even when you study the theory, learn a little at a time. This book was broken up into sections just to help you advance steadily without getting overwhelmed by the information. Common Mistakes That Beginners Make We have mentioned many of these mistakes, but just to reinforce this, here is a list of the common mistakes that beginner piano players make. Being aware of these mistakes can help you avoid them. They are Ignoring the importance of practicing finger exercises Playing with flat fingers Not practicing good posture A lack of consistency when practicing Expecting great results too quickly Trying to play the piano at the beginning rather than practicing Not using a metronome a metronome is a device that produces an audible sound at regular intervals, which is usually in beat per minute BPM. It is used to help musical practice playing in regular pulses. Not realizing that clefs do not refer to which hand to use. In piano playing, there are two lines of music on a sheet. One dictates the action of the right hand, and the other dictates the actions of the left hand. Clefs are musical symbols that are used to indicate pitch, not which hand to use. Treating keys and notes like they are the same. Keys are on the piano while notes are on the music sheet. They are not one on the same. Not deviating from C major. We will delve deeper into minor and major notes in this book, but it bears noting here that most beginners stick to C major because it is the easiest note to play. 
Ultimately, you need to move on to advance your range and skill.